And I'm going to be reading from Psalm 40. This is when you get it from Southern Reading. And I'm reading from the NIV. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for us, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O oh my God, your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips as you know, O oh Lord. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, O oh Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me, for troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. Be pleased, O oh Lord, to save me. O oh Lord, come quickly to help me. May all who seek to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, the Lord be exalted. Yet I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. Oh, my God, do not delay. So uh, Adam, um, thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. for the scripture, thank you for the prayer. We thank God for another chance and opportunity to give the Lord praise because we know it's due unto his name. Amen? Amen. 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 God is such a good God. We want to thank you for all of those that were able to attend the uh, uh, calling hours for Pastor Lee's father and uh, even the service yesterday for those that traveled and uh, we're thankful for that. I know it's such a blessing to have that support and love when you lose a loved one that's near and dear to your heart. And he was such a great influence. And the celebration of life was beautiful. And, um, you know, all of those of us, and I believe we've all been touched by a loss in our life, it, it can go pretty deep. But God is the one who gives us the strength to endure. Amen? Because it happens to us all. If we live long enough, we've lost loved ones. And even in my, I feel like, short lifetime, I've lost uh, my first husband, passed away suddenly. I've lost a mother. I've lost a sister and a brother. But God is the one that gives us strength. Amen? Amen. And I thank him for that. Because without him, you know, I, I don't know where we would be. And uh, so many times I think to myself and I've seen people in similar situations who've lost their minds over it. And, um, and I just praise God that he'll keep your mind, if you, if you just keep it stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Amen? How many believe that? Perfect peace is what he has promised us if we just keep our mind stayed on him. We know the battlefield is in the mind. And we have to pull down strongholds because they're fighting us daily, you know, to give up or to uh, some, some have had to struggle with suicidal thoughts and, and various things that come to our minds. But we are thankful that we can overcome that. Amen? Amen. 
And we can testify unto the Lord's goodness because we overcome by what? And by the what? By the word of our testimony. And I praise God. Sometimes the enemy wants to shut our mouths and not to testify because sometimes I don't know what it is, but we tend to get embarrassed about the tests and the trials that we've went through in our past. But if you just tell of it, you'll be amazed at how many people share the same situations. Because in this life, there's going to be tests and trials. There's going to be death. There's going to be loss. There's going to be happiness and peace and joy. But because Adam sinned, we have an unperfect world. But we're striving for heaven, who, who the Lord has made a place for us, and it's going to be a perfect place. Amen? Can you just imagine what heaven will be like? Ooh, I tell you, I, I'm looking forward to it because I know that this earth, this is not it. This is not it. We can have joy down here. We can laugh down here. But it's not it. There's more to it. Amen? Do you believe it? I believe it. I believe it. I trust God, and I'm looking forward to a day that we don't have to get up and go to work. Amen. <laughs> Those of you that retired, you all might have a taste of it, but you all, some of you all seem busier retired than you did when you were working. But those of us who have to still hit the clock at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and have to get off at five and you have to ask permission if you want to leave early we won't have any of that to worry about when we get to heaven amen, amen. we won't have to worry about tears and death and sorrow and pain and bills and all the things that this life is filled with but we will have an opportunity just to give god praise and see our loved ones those that have made their calling and election sure We'll see him again. Hallelujah. Uh, yesterday at the service, I believe, Pastor John's youngest brother who did the eulogy, he talked about they're not coming back here, those that have passed away, but we can certainly go meet them. You know, and I thank God for that. I have joy knowing that I can see my family members again. Hallelujah. I remember I shared with some of you shortly after my sister Lisa had passed, um, I remember having this dream about her, and my sister Lisa was a very um, simplistic person. You know, she wasn't always fancy, but she was just who she was, you know. And in this dream, she was dressed kind of bummish, if I could say that. She just had on this hat and clothes that just didn't look right. And I remember I was getting off of this elevator, and I said to her, oh, Lisa, like I hadn't seen her in a while, so I was very excited to see her, but she didn't know who I was. And I was trying to get her, and I grabbed my phone, and I said, look, you're, you're in my picture. You know me. I know you. But she still didn't respond, and it really made me think of once, our family members that are saved leave this earth no more do they have a desire to, to know the things down here but they have something great to look forward to they have a new name over in glory they are excited about what is going on and I remember my father encouraging me maybe even after my mother passed saying even if they had a chance they wouldn't come back here you know not to this because we have something great to look forward to. And so we have to make heaven our goal. Amen. And we strive for that. Amen. Amen. We're not perfect people, but we strive for perfection. Amen. 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 I thank God for it. And I thank God for the wonderful stories that were told about my father-in-law yesterday of such great faith. And um, they talked about how he preached on the rooftop of a church. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, to get up on the rooftop for people to see you. And some, you know, would probably say, well, ooh, what's going on there? You know, but he didn't care. He wanted to proclaim 
the gospel of Christ, the good news to tell people how to get saved. Because one day, as the Lord tarries, we all will go the route of death. And we have to have everything ready and prepared to go to meet our king. Amen? Amen. How many are ready to meet their king? Hallelujah. Oh, and for those that are not, get ready. Amen? Because tomorrow's not promised. Amen. He's given us a free gift, and that's salvation. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for the gift of salvation. Amen. It's joy, peace, hallelujah, righteousness, and the Holy Ghost. I thank God for it. At this time, we're going to just take a few minutes, and we're just going to meet and greet. Um, if you uh, want a fist pump or elbow bump, whatever it is that you do, just take a few moments and tell somebody you love them and that you're glad to see them today. Give them just an encouraging word to bless them. Amen. Maybe something to encourage them along the week. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.
Mr. Praise the Lord, so good to see you. Come on, praise team. Y'all might as well head on up. We're going to get ready. Sing. Here you go, sweetie. Here you go, Darnetta. Come on up, honey. We're going to get ready. You're just going to flow. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Lord. Let's give God another hand, praise. Ain't he a good God? Oh, good God. Yes, he is. We serve a great God. We are we're just grateful this, mo this morning about all God has done for us and excited about being in his house and time to worship on this wonderful Mother's Day. Anybody thankful for the mother and the mother figures? Come on, let's give the mother the hand, praise. It's your day for us to honor all the mothers and just thank the Lord. The Lord, our Lord Jesus came into this world through a mother, yeah. a young mother, a dad. Yeah. Amen. Young, young yeah. teenage mother. Yeah. She didn't go down to the clinic. She had that child, didn't she? Amen. And we thank Amen. God for that. Hallelujah. We wouldn't have no salvation today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But because she she took that glorious thing and she she valued it, today we can come to him in faith. Amen. So we're just we're we're grateful today for just the, for all the mothers and uh, what well, some of our mothers are gone, but we're still grateful, aren't we? That's right. uh, yeah, we have those those wonderful memories and things are not left us. So right. so we thank God today for our mothers. Yes. Amen. And the fathers too, but that's a little later down the road. Yes. We're gonna get to the fathers, so y'all y'all make sure y'all wash the dishes and stuff today. <laughs> Then y'all be sitting around eating and don't wash no dishes. Can I get an amen, mother? Amen. Yeah, we get them dishes out of the way. That's their job today. Right. It's my job every day. Yeah, we work together. Amen. Right. So, yeah. But we are, we're just grateful. We really are grateful this morning. I feel like the Lord is really going to bless us today. I know he is. So yeah. uh, we ask as always that you pray for us uh, as we Share the word. Will you worship with us this morning?
that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your Thank you. 
hands, give God some praise. For his goodness today. For his goodness, mercy today. That we want to be where the Lord is in his will this morning.
shout some praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. We are grateful. We are grateful. Let's give God another hand praise. That's a good song. Let all my worship flow to you. The Bible says we have to speak those names. He said, well, my worship ain't going there. Well, you start saying it. I might be surprised. You might be surprised. I just want to personally thank those who have reached out in the uh, uh, the last few days to me and said nice things. And some of you sent money and uh, some of you traveled to Crawfordville, Indiana and in the, the event of my father passing. I want to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I appreciate you. And it makes things easier when people are there. The Bible says uh, somewhere that there's safety in the multitude council. Uh, so we thank God first and foremost for family. Everybody happy about family? I know I am. And every family has some crazy folks in it. Amen. The first family was whacked, so don't play around. Murder, murder in the first family now. Come on, brothers killing each other and carrying on, so don't act like your family's perfect. You may have to go over to Denver to find that one in the hill, but you got somebody crazy in that family. But we don't have any shame because we have a great God. And there's nothing like coming together and, and breaking the bread of life. Uh, one of the great things about life is coming together and eating. Getting a whole bunch of folks that enjoy eating. Oh, she's laughing in the back. I'm serious now. Uh, coming together and eating. Where are we going to eat? That physical food, you get to taste it on your palate. Ain't God good? It just ain't nourishing for you. It's good in your mouth. Sweet. Some of y'all like that garlic salt and heap that stuff on there. <laughs> and Creole seasoning, and they've got a barbecue sauce. Every time I go to the store, I get a new barbecue sauce. I'm on Stubbs right now. If you ain't tried Stubbs, you better get you some Stubbs because it is delicious. But that food goes down into your belly, and that same delicious food, man, brings life to your body. Somebody said it gives them the itis. That's what we call it in our family. That means you're going to go to sleep after you eat. You look over and his head is back. I said, oh, he got the itis. I don't know where they come up with this stuff. But physical food is a wonderful thing. Blesses your body. I love it. We, we enjoy eating. We eat good. We, we surmise and get on Pinterest and find up ways to, to eat and things to eat and new recipes. I said, we got to get us a list of stuff that we make, because we know how to make several things, but we need to, you know, when you was in school, they had a menu, so you knew what they was going to have on Thursday. they having square pizza on Thursday, so I'm trading you for my oatmeal cookies. Amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. But that physical food is a blessing. Yeah, God is good. He has given us these things to eat. And he told Peter at one time, giving him a revelation to Jews and Gentiles, rise, Peter, slay, and eat. And somebody said, well, that don't mean meat is good. Well, look, God don't tell lies, to, physical lies, to tell a spiritual truth. He meant meat is good. He don't, he don't have to lie to tell a spiritual truth. Because today we got a lot of people who are, who are vegans and, and all that. Well, go ahead, don't eat no meat, but don't tell me meat ain't good. God said it was good. He never tells a physical lie to explain the spiritual truth. Men do, but God don't. He said it's good if you bless it. I believe if you drain some of that cholesterol off of there, amen, you don't fry everything, you bake a little something, something, I think that meat is good because God is, hey, is not a liar. So if you ain't eating meat, just, just keep quitting, just keep doing what you're doing. Well, we're going to go have some chicken and some brisket and some fish and some all kind of good stuff today. Anyway, but my point is this, food is good. And just as food is good, the Bible says that men shall not live by bread alone, Brother Mauricio, but by every word. Somebody say every word. Every word. Not half the word, not the word you like, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. And when Jesus was being tempted, that's what he said. 
So, so there is a wealth there. If you are being tempted, if you are failing, and if you are being tried and you are falling down, listen to what Jesus said, that what you need more importantly is food and not physical food, spiritual food, the word of God. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. What we need at any point in our lives to come up higher for God is the word. Amen. We don't need it. Necessarily a preacher, although that preacher might be a conduit. The Bible says, How can you hear without him? But you need the word in your life. If the word is there, it can transform any situation. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're in trouble, you speak that word. If you need God, you speak a word. Everything that God does is it moves on at the behest of his word. The Bible said in Genesis 1, I don't mean to get into my lesson today, that the Spirit of God in the beginning moved on the face of the earth, just moving. <laughs> just moving. Some of y'all know what moving looks like. You was young and went to the party. But wasn't nothing being said. And moving don't get you nothing. But then the Bible said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And the light was good. He didn't stop there. Bob said he said and said and said again. And that everything that was created in the natural world was created by his word. The Bible says that by his own will, he begat us spiritually through his word. Ooh, I like that. It's the word of God that transformed me and brought me into faith. That's how I got saved. That's how you got saved. Through the word of God. That's why we love it. That's why the Bible is everywhere you go. I went somewhere the other day. I went to, went to a business or something. They had a Bible sitting there. And in the back, there, I don't know if these folks were saying words that was fit for church, but they had a Bible up there. Somebody got some sense. Amen. They value that word. I was in Crawfordsville the other day. We don't do it around here, not in Muncie. But on the Crawfordsville paper, they have a scripture every day, a scripture. Uh, at the Indianapolis Star, I don't know if it still has it, but the front of it always said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. The Word of God. Yeah. Oh, man, y'all only talk about nothing. Yeah. I'm excited about the Word today yeah. because I know what it did for my life. Yeah, yeah. The, the Word takes people off skid row and brings them into the good house. Oh, yeah. That's what the Word does. Yeah. The Word will take you off a of dope and get you sitting in your right mind. The word can cast out a demon in your life. Yes. The word can bring in good things that you've been waiting on. If, if you got the right word in you. Yes. You know, I ain't talking about nothing. I'm going to leave you alone. Psalms 119, that's where we're going to be at this morning. Pray for me. I need your help. Uh, thank you again for all your prayers. Uh, it's funny when someone dies, the, the, the grief comes and goes. I thought I could drive the other day. Psalms 119. Uh, 1 through 11. I thought I could drive when my father passed away. I got in my car. I'm just driving. And all of a sudden, grief hit me so hard, I almost wrecked. And I pulled over, and she was scrabbing the side. You know, they got the, what did they call it? They got a <laughs> name for that handle. <laughs> I'm going to say the church. But they, they got that, that name for that handle. She grabbed the handle. She said, Are you okay? And I was crying. But, but grief hits you so quickly sometimes uh, that you don't really know when it's coming. Uh, years ago, a family friend of ours, a big mama in our family, she passed away, and I, and I went there, and I just did my thing, and then, you know, we were pretty close, but then when I sat down um, in the funeral, the tears just came pouring out, and, and my, my brother-in-law was next to me, and he was looking, I was looking at him, and we was just, <laughs> we couldn't get enough Kleenexes, <laughs> and after we got done, we said, wow, <laughs> we didn't know <laughs> we had that in us. So, you know, grief is real, uh, we need to process it. Uh, but thank God, the Bible says that God has given us for grief uh, the garment of praise. Yes. And, and I found out as, as I dealt with grief, I lifted my hands up, yes. tell God, thank you. So I'm thanking him this morning uh, so that emotion doesn't take over me because I can't let them guide me. I got to let God's promises guide me. Yes. Yes. Amen. His promises are true. He said he would give me the garment of praise. Yes. And I got on the garment of praise this morning. Father was a good father. He brought me up in the right way. And not just me, but 15 kids in our family. And if that ain't bad enough, 12 boys. 12 boys. But, but he was an imposing figure like, like uh, 
uh, Pastor Boyd. He, he had a good size, and he, he was like Pastor Boyd. He, he, looked, he looked strong. He didn't look slothful. He looked like he could get you. There's nobody you wanted to try. But, but, but we, I thank God for him because he, he put and instilled in me great things. Uh, I was the first person in my family to graduate uh, with a bachelor's degree. Uh, first person to really be accoladed and lauded where sports was concerned. Indiana All-Star and All-State in sports. I thank God for that. Uh, waited patiently. I didn't try to promote myself and let someone uh, promote me. That, that's a good path for anybody who's looking to go anywhere. Don't promote yourself. Well, God does not honor that. You promoted yourself. He can't do it. Psalm 75. Promotion come not from the east or the west, but it cometh from the Lord. So if someone promoted themselves, we're going to just go like that. Don't do it to them. Just to yourself and then we'll turn around and like that. Just turn around and just that didn't happen. God don't ignore, he promotes people. And why he does it and how he does it, that's his prerogative. Promotion does not come from the east or the west. That's where men are. It comes from the Lord. Anyhow, today, with God's help, uh, we are going to be blessed through Psalms 119, uh, 1 through 11. Uh, if you, st if you can, can stand, I'm going to ask that you stand today for God's word. Psalms 119, 1 through 11. I want you to think about this text as we read it. Sometimes we read it and not paying attention at all. Some of y'all trying to figure out how you can get the molasses in your cowboy beans, but let, let's try to consider this word today. Psalms 119, 111, I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart I have sought thee. Oh, let, not, let me not wander from thy commandments. And this is where I want to take my text from. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. You may be seated. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, preaching, teaching, and understanding of his word. I want to minister for a few minutes this morning from the idea, thy word have I hidden. Yes. Thy word have I hidden. Yes. Yes. We are thankful again, as I, I talked about, for the word of God. We encourage everybody to come each Sunday and, and, and get a word from the Lord. Uh, I guess God placed the Sabbath there as, as a day of rest. And when we look at what the Sabbath was years ago, it is increasingly taking less and less form of what God created it. Uh, nowadays, men use it for an extra day to get double time at work. God didn't create Sunday for double time. Six days shall a man work, and on the seventh day you're supposed to rest. Sunday is actually the first day of the week, and because we are supposed to give God first everything that we have. And to put him out of position is to put him in a place that he can't go. Uh, and to be in alignment with him is to find ourselves keeping those commands. We want to talk just for a few topics today, uh, maybe three or four, about uh, what, how does the word profit us? Somebody say profit. profit. I, I like the word profit. I'm a finance major at Ball State, and I'll be graduating soon. But uh, I like the word profit. Profit is how you is, is tabulated by taking the revenues minus expenses, and then you have profit. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of you that have a lot more free-flowing cash, not because of how much money you make, but because you have eliminated expenses. Amen. You have less expenses to deal with so that the profit is greater. Okay? Um, if you make $1,200 a month and your rent is eleven ninety-nine. 
And somebody that makes $300 a month might have more profit than you. They might have more free-flowing cash. There's some wisdom when it comes to dealing with your money. If you're running your money down to the dope man, you may have less money. Can I get an amen? If you're spending your money at the casino, you may have less money. Can I get an amen? How many lottery tickets have God's children bought this week? Can I get an amen? I bought so much stuff on Amazon the other day. I looked up and my wife said, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't, you're spending too much money. I said, oh, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I'm guilty too. But the word has profit. There's profit in the word. And I want to talk about a few of those things today. And I hope that these things stay with you because uh, when you are a person or a child of God who who profits from the word God is pleased uh, because it's his inheritance. It's his will. It's his kingdom. And all that you do is profited within the confines of those things. His will, his kingdom, his inheritance. We get to be partakers, but it's all his. So, so, we, so we bring to life the, the scripture that the glory belongs to God. I like that. The glory belongs to God, and since we're with him, we get to enjoy some of that glory. Amen. Amen. We get to, you can't be around God and him be in your life, and you not get some glory too. That glory, glory shines up onto you. What is the profit of the word? Well, I'll tell you what it does. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17, it is able to make us wise. It's able to make us wise. And, and I would propose this morning that you can't really be wise without the word. Right. Amen. amen. I got one amen. amen. This is what Paul tells Timothy. He said, continue in those things. Continue. Somebody say continue. continue. Say don't stop. don't stop. Sometimes I get to a stall, but I don't go back. But I'm just tired in my walk. But, but don't stop. Keep going forward. He says, continue in the things which thou hast learned. And has been assured of. You got to be sure of salvation. You can't be on the fence when it comes to salvation. You can't be on the fence when it comes to God's promises. You got to know he's true. You got to know his promises are good. You got to know he never misses. He's always on time. Because he's an on time God. Talking about God now. Not your cousin Larry. Can we get a hand clap for the God? Of all salvation. Come on, put your hands together. He's never missed. He's never off. He don't have no bad days. He don't sleep. He don't get tired. And he never has any bad thoughts about us, the Bible says. Psalmist says a thousand times a day he thinks about you. And that's just good. That's just good, I guess, uh, symbolism to saying he's always thinking about you. Amen. Continue down. In the things you have learned, Timothy, knowing where you learned them from. And as my father passed, I understand that he was my father in the gospel. He, he, he told me about God's saving grace. One person came into your life and, and enlightened your eyes to salvation. And whoever that person is, you ought to never forget that. Who is that person that preached the gospel to you first, that calls you to believe? You ought to never forget that person. Paul, Paul said, he, though you have 10,000 instructors, you've only got one father. And he wasn't talking about Jesus. He was talking about himself. He had purposely ministered to people that brought salvation to them. Be, because the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? If you don't share the gospel, how's anybody going to get saved? You say, well, my sister Susan is preaching it up. No, 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 you. We need to be able to tell somebody about God's saving grace that he is able to reach down into a life and bring us up from a low place, the place the Bible says of darkness and, and of spiritual death and bring us to life, as Pastor Boyd pointed out last week. But he has quickened us and made us alive. The prophet of the word is this. It, it is able to not save you, but the Bible says to make you wise, to know what you have to do to be saved. Continue in those things, knowing where you learned them from, he says this, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith. They didn't stop there. This is the important part. Through Christ Jesus. There's a lot of people that think there's a lot of salvation in other places. 
But the Bible lets us know, and here we teach, there's only salvation in Jesus Christ. And if you don't come to him, you won't be saved. Oh, man, I believe it this morning. And I'm thankful. Somebody give a hand clap if you're saved this morning. Jesus said, I'm, a, I'm the door. And if a person comes up another way, he's a robber and a thief. You won't be no robber and a thief. There ain't going to be no robbers and thieves in heaven, are there? Tupac said, I wonder if heaven got a ghetto. I wish he was alive because I'd tell him, no. <laughs> There's no heaven. There's no ghetto in heaven. Heaven is a holy place filled with glory and grace. And nothing will go up there that defiles. The Bible says God is going to straighten things out here even. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked places shall be made straight. The rough places made smooth. And the glory of God shall be revealed. And all of us will see it together. What God's going to do. So don't worry about getting up there and then it'll be crooked again. Well, I wish I could preach this morning. Got a few church folks in here. He goes on to say this, all scripture, he wants you to know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You have to know that the Bible that you had in your hand and the 66 books, the 27 in the New Testament and the 39 in the Old is God's word. We try to bring all these attachments. Ain't no attachments. This is it. This is God's word. You get them Dead Sea Scrolls or something else that T.D. Jakes wrote, this is the word. This is what God wrote. This is what God inspired. Well, some of y'all wrote in books, and congratulations, but those are not God inspired. And not like this is. This is, it, it, this is God inspired solely. This is his word. That, that the men that essentially wrote it were nothing more than just pens being used. They, they wrote it. Their hands was used, honey. But let me tell you, it was, the God, it was God breathed. He breathed this thing out. And it don't take you long to open it up and start reading it. Ain't nobody but God put this word in here. This is God's word written by 40 different authors over thousands of years. You can't put nothing together like that. How in the world? Uh, Isaiah didn't know Paul. How do you put something like you got to be God to put this word together? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because the devil wants to throw off your authenticity of this word. We call it the Biblios. That means the book of books. There's all other books, and then there's this book, this word. Have I hid my heart that I might not sin against thee? See, because people and the devil in this world want to take stuff with you, from you, but they really don't want your stuff. I see my hairline starting to go back. I said, what's going on? But he really don't want my hairline. My car broke down, but he really don't want my car. What he really wants to do is shake this, this word out of my hand, but you ain't getting this word. I had a friend last night. He said, hey, let's go out to the club or something, do something. And I heard think about it. I said, well, I could go out there and hang out with you. And then, and then I got to think about it. Hold up. Now, this is, I, this is coming against this word that's in here. Me, I ain't talking about you. You do what you want to do. That's on you. But, but what he was proposing was coming against something that, uh, you can't get this. You can use my car. You can have a little money. I can give you a whole lot of stuff. But you will not take this word from my heart. I will die with this word in my heart. I have hidden it in my heart. We'll stop being friends before you ever take this word. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, this word is stuck up in me. It ain't going nowhere. And if any relationship is, seeks to shake that word from you, you let that person go. Any. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin, best friend, homie, pal, confidant, comrade. It don't matter who it is. If they want to shake the word from you, cut them loose. You got to come out from amongst them and be separated. And you ain't got to wear it as a badge on your head. Because that's just trying to be ridiculous. Hide it in your heart where you hide stuff you value. The Bible says in Luke, lay not up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and dust corrupt and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and dust are not, rust are not. He said because where your treasure is, there's your heart. 
The things that you love and value are in your heart, the seat of a psychic life. All your thought patterns and forms, before you ever did it, there's a source of those things. It is the heart. It is the very place that the things that you value, what's in your heart today? Because it ought to be God's word. And in this wicked and perverse generation, you need the word. They want to twist God's word and twist the form and the shape and authority and family and in the church. And how are you going to stand with a college education? It won't help you stand, honey. A diploma won't get you what you need to have. You got to have the word hidden in your heart so you don't sin against him. That's the problem because when the word gets removed, you're subject to anything. You got to bring that word back and say, you can have whatever you want, but you will not take the word. It's hidden in my heart. I will not sin against the Lord. I won't do it. It's stuck up in me. We can joke, we can kid, we can have fun. I'm here to help you. I can do whatever I can. But there's a line that I'm not going to cross. I didn't start this thing yesterday. Do you remember the scripture that you had from the beginning, Timothy? From a child. Do you remember when your mom took you to church? It wasn't bingo. She was teaching you about life, both now and eternal, because it has to be now if it's going to be eternal. It can't be not now and eternal. That's what we call grace without works. The Bible said that's faith without works, which is dead. Dead money don't work. Dead cars don't get you nowhere. And dead faith won't get you no life. How does a young man cleanse his faith? How? By taking heed to his word. That's how. See, see, because we all get to places in our lives where we get stuck. You know, just, and then all of a sudden you say, what's wrong? And you're trying to figure out what's wrong with the lawnmower. It ain't going nowhere. Well, we're going to take it to, to the store because it won't go. And your spiritual life is the same way. If you get stuck in sin, bam. Some of, you, well, some of us have been getting stuck for a long time. Bam. I'm here to tell you that the place you need to go is not Lowe's. You don't need to send in your soul to John Deere. John Deere don't know nothing about your soul. There's only one who knows about what's in your heart. He knows what's deep down in your heart. And if he don't get there, then it'll never be fixed. You got to take that word and hide it in there. Hide it deep down inside. You ain't got to tell everybody, but you got to know for sure, for sure, that that word is stuck up in you. Because you'll be off on all kinds of stuff, doing stuff you ain't got no business doing because you don't have a compass. Ted Kennedy wrote a book a few years ago called True Compass. And I was thinking, does Teddy really know? I ain't got no problem with the Kennedys. But I had to think myself, does, does he really know what a true compass is? Because this is the only true compass that exists. Uh, uh, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not a stripe on, on a sprint line or on the track line. Not, not, not the beginning as a point of departure. Because that's when we hear beginning. We'll get into that in a second. Not the beginning as a point of departure. But as a foundation of everything I do. Yeah. Oh, so here comes the, 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 the uh, discussion on the abortion. How do we start? Right there. That's where it starts. And if you don't start that at the beginning of wisdom, you'll be saying dumb stuff like it's okay to kill. Yeah. The same way the police do. Oh, well, he had, he had this. No, no, it was murder. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Well, how do we know? The word. Love thy brother. Don't kill him. Don't be angry with him. But how do we know if we don't have the word of God? The Bible says it's able to make us wise unto salvation. That's what we knew first off. Secondly is this. The word of God makes a nation righteous before him. The word makes a nation righteous before God. Proverbs, I believe it's 14. Is that where I was at? The fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. Then drop down to verse 34. Godliness 
exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. How does a nation become righteous? And righteous is a wonderful word. And if I had some lemon meringue pie, you would, you would want a righteous peace, wouldn't you? Some peach cobbler, you, you want a righteous portion, wouldn't you? Yeah, righteous is a good thing. You have to work that out in your own head. But righteousness in, in one version says this. Let me look at here. Uh, godliness makes a nation great. But sin is a disgrace. And, and when you see nations that are disgraced, they have increasingly thrown out the word of God. There was a time in this country, regardless of how you feel about the founding fathers, that they did their best to come together on the word of God to write that constitution. And a lot of that constitution is very equitable. Men twisted on the lower levels, but the constitution overall is pretty good. Now, when it, when it matriculates down the people, didn't they try to cut it up and mess it up? But they were guided by the word of God. Uh, I read something that the pilgrims that came here drove, uh, took a boat three thousand miles and their average speed was three miles an hour but not because they were seeking gold they wanted the opportunity to serve the true and the living god like they wanted to serve him the word was stuck in their heart and they bore that sea that pacific ocean to get here today so that they could do one thing and it wasn't so they could make a harvard or or a yale or a ball state they wanted the opportunity and the freedom to serve the true and the living God. Yeah. Righteousness makes a nation great. Not just a city, a whole nation. That's what the word of God will do. What else does it do? This is, this is good. I like this one. It, it causes your enemies to leave you alone. Enemies. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You have enemies? I know I do. Yeah, you got, you got unknown enemies. You got people that you think like you right now don't like you. Some of y'all say, I ain't got no enemy. Everybody loves me. No. The Bible says, be aware when all men praise you. Yeah. And you get scared. When everybody's patting you on your back, be very careful. Because it, it's just God, devil is setting you up for a fall. Don't pay attention to everybody patting you on your back. I'm telling you as your pastor, don't pay no attention to that. Because the Bible says you, but that's when you need to start being very safeguarding that very heart and that word that he gave you. Here's another scripture in Psalms. When a man's ways please the Lord, his enemies are at peace with him. I, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Because I, I, I had a rough background. Uh, my father raised me in the church and then I went my own way. And, and then I got into things I had no business getting into. And I got deep into them. But I never forgot that scripture. I said, Lord, just give me some time. <laughs> give me some time to get out of this mess. And just give me some time to repent. Have mercy upon me, oh Lord. I'm going to get this thing turned around. If you don't do it, it'll never happen. But just get me to the point where I'm pleasing to you. And I put my enemies at rest. And you know what? God did that for me. I remember being in the car with some guys, and they was in the back seat and had a gun. And the, and the Lord told me, he said, these guys are going to murder you here. I was on the east side of Indianapolis by Brookside Park. I had a bunch of money and a bunch of other things I shouldn't have had. Thousands and thousands of dollars in. The Lord spoke a word to me. He said, don't say nothing. He said, you say yes and no, and you'll get out of this trouble. And I looked back at the guy, and he was in the back, and he, you know, I sort of looked at him. He was just looking at him. He was waiting for me to make one false move. But, but I wasn't even totally in the will of God, but I was pleasing to, to him at that time because I listened. And that's what this is about, listening to what God says. And I listen, and I'll tell you what, he, he delivered me and my, the enemy that wanted to destroy me. And I knew these guys was rough. They killed folks before. You know, this guy, guy the Bible calls them murderers. They got more than one person under their belt, killed several folk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a new breed that we have. Used to be hustlers and all that stuff. But then, then about 1990, the hustler went to be a murderer. That's what everybody wants in the hood now. I got a body on me. What a shame. That's where you get the clout from. But anyway, th this is what the Bible says. When your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes enemies be at peace with you. It says better is a little righteousness than great revenue. It it's good to just have righteousness in my life. It if the granaries are not full, it's okay. If the cabinets aren't full from top to bottom, if I don't have wholesome and ding-dongs and oatmeal cream buys and then juicy juice on that rope, and then I'll go to the deep freezer and I got fish, 
and eggs and poultry. If I don't have all that stuff, but I just got God in my life, it's okay. It's better to have that than great revenue. Can I get an amen this morning? We're in church. It's better. The Bible says better is a, a dinner where herbs is than a stall ox in contention. Uh, some people are in a house where two people always argue. You know, but I got to stay with them because the person got money. You know, they, they pay the bill, so I'm stay with them. The Bible says it's better to just have a salad than have a big old ox that you just slay and eat meat all day. Do, you, do any of y'all agree with that? We got any peacemakers here? If you're going to start stuff in my house, you got to go. Ain't no trouble in my house. And people have tried. I put folks out. You going out of here, we don't have no trouble. We have peace in my house. Uh, peace, it sounds like peace. It feels like peace. We act peaceful. Ain't no trouble up in my house. Yeah. Sons, daughters, anybody. I'll take them home in a heartbeat. I don't know where you're going. I call your mama. Where are we going to meet you at today? I come to, we're coming to you. We're going to come to you today. Where you at? Louisiana? I'm putting him on a plane. Bring that foolishness up in here. Had to take him out. He's got to have peace. He's got to get amen. He's got to take him out. It ain't going to take us up. Oh, them troublemakers ain't going to leave your house. Them fools ain't going to leave your house. You got to put them out. I don't mind doing it. I ain't right no how. I need God's help. Let this smooth taste fool you. I, need, I got issues. I need God's help. It, it caused your enemies to leave you alone. Right. When you please God. Yeah. Because you have an enemy. Yeah. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 that we don't wrestle against people. It's not actually people that's doing it. When you see these mean mugging men and these evil folks doing these evil things, it's actually not them. It's not something that's in their bloodstream. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. Spiritual wickedness in high places. That's way up there. Rulers of darkness of this world. Evil, evil. We don't use that word no more. We don't call people evil. I did it once in a, in a teacher's conference, and she said, you know, he's acting up. I said, oh, no, he's evil. She said, oh, no, don't say that. Yeah, he's evil. He's evil. But so the days are evil. So if the days are evil, what does that mean? People are evil. Yeah, yeah, know it. Know it, believe it, trust it. It's an evil time. Folks, there's evil men. And, and if you put a D on the front of that, you know why. <laughs> the devil. Uh, I had somebody in the family call it devilment. <laughs> he made a whole word out of it. <laughs> he gave it to some devilment. <laughs> I love that word. It's wonderful. Anyway, your enemies will have peace with you. What else does the word of God in your life keeping it hidden up in your heart? It, it, it is what gives us a right understanding of who God is. A lot of people get their revelation of who God is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. These almost scriptural things. Right. I, I read something the other day where somebody put a proverb in there and they changed words and, and made it suit them. Mm -hmm. That ain't scripture. That ain't God's word. If you ain't careful, you can write your own book. Yeah. It's called Johnny's Bible. But this is the Holy Bible. This is the exclusive Bible. This is the exclusive word. I can't twist it up. Revelation says if any person adds or takes away, God will take away their part from the tree of life. That's no more. And spiritual death doesn't mean necessarily that you're not going to cease to exist. You're going to still exist. Just a life beyond this world cut off from God. We call it hell. They call it Hades in the Greek. Whatever you want to call it. There's a real place. Hell is still hot. And the people there will be the coldest people, hardest people in the world. There were people who don't want anything good, to, anything to do with God and good and nothing else. So it's the right place to be for them. That's where they need to be. And people who say people don't believe that don't believe that we need to have jails. We do need a jail. I had a family member, and he had killed a few folks, and in his dying day, I laid down to him. I said, if God raised you up, I was going to pray for him. I said, God raised you up? I said, you think you repent? He said, no, I'd do it all again. The heart is, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? 
So, so when you try to hash out whether well, God is good and everything's righteous, just consider that. that. That men in their obstinance won't repent. We need God's help. We need his help. You can't do it on your own. It's not like going up to the street and get some flour. You can do that all by yourself, I guess. But you can't get God up in you without his help. We've got to pray for this word to come in. This is what Paul said. He says, yea, doubtless, Philippians 3. He said, I count all things but loss. Paul had an excellent religious background. He said, it's nothing. You know, I know I was raised in the church. Forget all about it. Stop, stop telling people that. That don't mean nothing. He said, because I counted the loss for the excellency of the knowledge of knowing Christ. Of knowing Christ. Everything in his life was counted as dumb, which is doo-doo. There's some worse words for it. We ain't going to go there. He said it's all considered doo-doo in light of the excellency of knowing Jesus. See, because you can come to them doors all day and never know Jesus. I had the one guy, I was preaching, he said, I just like the way he moved. <laughs> you like the way I move? It wasn't the word. He wasn't coming for the word at all. He said, yeah, I like you and your brother. I like the way he yells and huffs and puffs. We call it hooping. He was there for the artistic delivery. He wasn't there for salvation. Paul says, I, I count these things lost for the ex excellency of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, this is what happened. I suffered the loss of all things. Jesus said, unless you are able to, willing to lay down a life, you won't gain one. That's how you know you're saved. Have you laid down that old life? Right here from the pulpit. I can promise you that. Have you laid down the old life? I didn't say that's how you have salvation. I said that's how you know you have salvation. Because it's still a process, right? We're all growing, right? And some of us got a little sprig coming out and some of us a tree. But thank God, whatever you got going on, give God praise. He said, and I found in him, being found in him, this word, I was found in him. He was found in me. I heard his word. I put his word in me. You see how this word, this word, being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is through the law. He said, but that which is the faith of Christ, the, the righteousness, which is in God by faith. He said that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Not that I've already attained either made perfect, but I follow after that which I was apprehended of Christ Jesus. I followed and caught the thing that caught me. You see what I'm saying? He caught me, and I got him. He blessed me, and I blessed him. Yeah. You said, I can't bless God. I'm just a little. No, no, no. David said, I will bless the Lord. Yeah. I will bless the God that created. I'm going to bless him because he blessed me. Oh, yeah. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast of the Lord. Others shall hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord. Yeah. Let us exalt his name together. What a wonderful scripture. What else are we done? This is, I think this is one of my last ones. Yeah, this should be about it. Who is this word, folks? Jesus. He's the one that Isaiah said that he saw high and lifted up and that his train filled the temple. He's the one that Joshua ran up on during war. Bob said he dropped down and in, in, on his knees he got the strategy. That's where you get your strategy from. If you want to know what to do this week, where to go, how to behave. You want the whole plan? It'll happen on your knees in prayer. Thank you. Or standing on, standing in prayer. But everything that you need comes through prayer. This word is the one that John says, listen, was there in the beginning. Yeah. Ah, he refers to a timeless eternity of this word. So we've been talking about this word. But this word is just to introduce you to the eternal word, the one who breathed this out. He says he was there in the beginning. The God that created the heavens and the earth, when the beginning uh, was already there, he was there because he was the beginning. 
The idea is this, is John is saying in John 1 that the word existed before creation. Before there was a mountain or a tree or air or a sky or clouds or sun or people or a church or wood or trees, that this word was here. Now you get what I'm saying? That before you took your first breath, the word was here. Before the man was designed and made, the word was here. John makes it clear that the word is not just the beginning, but it is the beginning of the beginning. He was there in the beginning before anything was there in the beginning. It was the word. This is what Trent says. He's a commentator. She said, had the word of the beginning, question mark. No, for if we reach back to any beginning, there already was in existence this word. Uh, it, at once it is evident to John's vision that the word is no other than God, the self-existing one. So when we say the word, we're not talking about ink on a paper. I'm trying to introduce you to the one that created everything. That's what John said, that in the beginning was the word. He wasn't the beginning. He was the word. The beginning, he was the word. The word was with God. It was God. All things were made by him, and without him, nothing was made. Do you need something made in your life? Do you need something new this morning? I want to introduce you to the word of God. Uh, hide it up in your heart. Begin to confess those things and watch God manifest those things. I'm talking about this word here. It is able to cleanse your way. It is able to loose you from bondage. It is able to give you peace. It will push aside depression. Bring good things into your life, this eternal word. You don't talk about nothing. I'm sick of nominal Christians who relegate Jesus to small stuff because he's the word. He is the word of God. In the beginning was the word. That's what he said. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. And here's what he said. The word was made flesh. That's the whole idea. That the eternal God that created the heavens was made into the likeness of a man. Uh, that he knows all about your struggle. The Bible says that many has received him to them. He made the sons of God. Look, we got to stop reducing Jesus to a meme. You know, they put Jesus on a meme and they'll set him down as a little baby Jesus in the bed. But he's more than a meme, folks. We got to stop relegating Jesus in the eternal word to and arguing about how he looks. Every, every, every month, somebody, some brother sends me something and asks me a question, is Jesus white? Don't do that to my God. Don't do that to the word of God. He's more than a pigment on the skin. He hung the sun up in the sky and the clouds in the sky. He was here before there was pigment. He's the eternal word. He is the eternal author of salvation today. He is the hope of every blessing. He is the source of every healing. He is a source of salvation. He's not a man. He's more than a man. God is not a man. He should lie. He is the eternal God, the eternal word. And if you want to have his word in your heart, you've got to hide it somewhere. He's more than a good vibe. How many people tell you, send me some? I can't shoot you no good vibes. Shoot me some good energy, will you? What's energy? Energy has no sense. Power has no sense. Electricity runs in a source, in a direction. If you don't tell it where to go, God is more than power. He is the eternal wisdom of God that we see in the face of Jesus Christ. The eternal word of God. That same word that he told Job, he said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? He's more than a mean. He created everything that he is. He told you, Job, to gird up your loins. Get your mind together. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to ask you some questions. Since you want to ask me everything about the word, let me ask you some questions. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Well, I'm still talking about the word this morning. Where were you? Tell me if you know when I laid the cornerstone. When I laid the ocean out and told, uh, from this shall thy proud ways be stayed. Where were you when God did this? 
because he did it by his word. Where were you when all the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God gave God praise because of the word of God? Do you know where you were? You don't have an answer, do you? Because you wasn't here. Because the word always existed. It always was. So we find out that in the word of God is everything we need. In the word, a young man's ways are clean. And there's nothing like having your life cleansed. There's nothing like having your life cleansed. There's nothing like having the blood of Jesus wash away your shame. There's nothing like having the blood of Jesus straighten your walk. And if you're in this church today and he hasn't done those things for you, ain't no need in coming here. Because that's what he does. It is the word of God that transforms a life. It's the word of God that brought Abraham out of Ur. Abraham was in Ur. It was an idolatrous city. But something about the word of God caused him to move. It caused him to change his life. He lost family and familiarity and habitat and things that he trusted because he believed in the word of God. It's the same word that caused Noah to build an ark because he had heard from God. When it had not rained in years, but he believed the word of God. And God made good on his promise because he always makes good on his promises. He had the word hid in his heart. What do you believe in God for today? Because if it's in his word, he shall perform it. He's exalted his word above his name. It's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. You got to hide that bad boy up in there. Don't let anybody shake that word from you. It is the word of God that called Jacob to lean on his staff and worship God and bless the sons of Joseph. The word of God. Remember, he crossed his hands up because he had faith in God. He went against the normality of time and what people said was right. And even what Joseph thought was right, but he trusted God's word. And he blessed the right people at the right time because the word was hidden in his heart. And he came there through many trials and tribulations. His life was not easy. He wasn't a perfect man. He had failed God, but at the end of his life, the Bible said he worshiped God. He leaned on his staff and he blessed Ephraim and Manasseh. Do you have trust in God's word today? Do you believe his word today? I'm done. But it's the word that took Jesus to the cross. He said, if I die, the Father will raise me up. Wow. Wow. If I die, the Father will raise me up. And he didn't come to that without prayer. Remember, there was one time in Jesus' life where he didn't want to do the will of God. Father, if it's possible, I say that a hundred times a week. If it's possible, let the cup pass from me, the cup of suffering. And I am here to tell you, you don't get the calling without the cup. You'll never have a calling for God. He's never going to use you like he wants to use you until you first drink the cup. So what Christ did in Gethsemane was drink the cup because that was predicate to his blessing. As we move on from here, and I've got one last thing to share in closing, I'll close this week. As we move on from this physical building, this is what I wanted to tell you. People can take your car, they can take your clothes and your stuff. This week I lost my father. He was the king of my heart. I already lost my mom, lost my older brother who was my best friend at the time. And I've lost many, many others. But the word has remained through all these things. The Bible says in Isaiah and in Peter both it says the grass withers. The flower fades. Everybody's going away. He said, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And that's what we have to remember as we move from this location to the next. It will not profit us anything if we do not keep God's word at the centerpiece of all that we 
think, say, and do. God never gives you anything without a reason. There's a reason why he gave us a bigger church. Can you think it out logically? Because more people are coming. But if this foundational group of people at this church don't take the word of God with them, if you show up there without the word, we'll be like them dry bones she talked about a few weeks ago. You don't want to be no dry bones, do you? No. No. I, I, this is what I've committed to in life. And sometimes it was in the wrong way. I've committed to doing my best whatever I was doing. So sometimes it was the bad stuff, but I was really good at it. I was really good at doing bad stuff. But, but I'm still commi I'm committed to giving my all. And that's all God is saying. I, I, I want you to be all in. All the way in. Not half-hearted. Not, you know, not tipping your toe in the water to see if it's cold. It may be unpleasant for a while. But let me tell you what. It'll be refreshing. It will cleanse your way. This word of God will bless every portion of your life. Sometimes I, I minister to people, and even in this church, and they tell me the things they struggle with. And this is what I tell them. The Bible says if your eye is single, then the whole body's full of light. So I already know, because of God's word, what's going on in my own life, firstly, and in the life of other people. Because when your focus is on God, every, there's light all in the house. If there's, what he's trying to say is your whole life is blessed. Men, evil men, find peace with you. Salvation is real. But what happens is we stop focusing on God. But if we always keep that word hidden, look, you can take a blow. You, you can hit me with this word in here. You can slug me, Brother Cleves, and I might fall down. But I'll be laying down with this word still on me. Knocked out cold. Don't let nobody shake this word from you. Because every day when you go to work, somebody tries to shake this loose. Don't they? Hey, hey, I know you're a Christian. Let me tell you a few things that I don't think's right. Maybe that's what they say. <laughs> Let me tell you a few things I don't like about that church of yours. But it's not about the church. It's about God's word. Because you can be in a place and, 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 and have, you can't have fellowship without relationship. And sometimes we can be in here and have some relationship and not have fellowship. But fellowship means we, we have common lives together. We, we're showing up at the same places. We're going the same places. I'm not talking down verb. I'm, I'm talking 100% real this morning. We ought to be showing up at some of the same places. We ought to be not going to some of the same places. We ought to be talking the same way. We ought to be acting the same way. How do we know how we do all these things? How does the young man cleanse his way? The same way the old man cleanses his way. How do you know how to respect the elders? Because that's what the Bible says. How do you know how to love your wife? Why would I do that? Because that's what the word says. How do you know that the man is the head of the, uh, of the wife? How? The husband? How? Because that's what the word says. How do we know anything? Right here. We read the scripture. All scripture is good for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction. Uh, that the person might be not half-hearted, but might be thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. You know, well, don't you, if you bought a house, wouldn't it be nice to have it thoroughly furnished? Yeah. You wouldn't have to go out and buy nothing. And there's nothing like a thoroughly furnished Christian. Well, the trouble is when we, we're missing a couch and a sofa, a spiritual couch and a sofa. He ain't nowhere to sit down. Jesus can't find nowhere to sit. He, he wants you to be thoroughly furnished. How does that happen? Through his word. And, and it's a personal call to each and every one of us. If you don't take it up, when I came in this morning, I saw something I never saw since I started this church. One of the brothers was sitting down at a seat reading the Bible. I never saw it before. Before the preacher ever got up, he gets it. He gets it. It's the word. It's the word. And it's such an easy thing because we, we push it off to the corner of uh, in, to our end table. And we don't think nothing of it.
it, isn't it funny that, that, this, that we could disregard God's word? You know, something that even non-believers study and look and read. People who are atheists study this book. And God can't get his own people to, to study. I, I heard somebody said the Bible's hard to read, but, but yet they got a college education. <laughs> Took algebra, geometry. But how'd you do all that? Oh, well, I had to go to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, to the study person to tutor. But, well, we got some commentaries you can use. You, well, you can get to a chapter of the Bible, can't you? But no, that's too hard for me. I can't go Greek to Hebrew. You can't? Can you do English? <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone. I'm done. But look, let's give God a hand praise. That word I hit in my heart. You can have a lot of things, brother, but you'll never take this word from me. I, I've been through a lot in my life, and even when I wasn't doing what I was supposed to, I never let that word shake me. So sometimes I'd be at places that I wasn't supposed to be, and they didn't know I was a, a, a PK. They didn't know I was a preacher's kid, but it would slip out. So I couldn't have been a good CIA operative because I would have blown my cover. It wouldn't have took them long. They'd been waterboarding me and getting stuff out of me. I do love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it wouldn't take long because... because you know, just like they, they found out Moses has been in the Egyptian house. Yeah. If you really got it, you can't hide it. You can't hide it. You can't hide it. Can't hide it. Ain't no denying it. And some of, some of us have been trying to deny what you are. You, you'll never change. Once God does what he does, you can't do nothing. You'll be like the prodigal son, scratching your head, talking about how many hired servants got food enough to eat in my father's house, and I'm out here with the pigs. How many of y'all ever ate with the pigs? Raise your hand. Everybody in here better raise their hand. Everybody, if you ain't got your hand, raise your lion. Everybody in here is ate with the pigs. All we like sheep have gone astray and chosen our own way. The Bible says he has laid on him the iniquities of us all. That's what it comes right back and says. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him and by his stripes. Woo! By his stripes, we're healed this morning. And that's more than, far more than physical healing. He's talking about the spiritual brokenness that was in man. That, that Who had believed this report? That's a question. Do you believe it this morning? Do you believe it? Who has believed this report? Who has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The Bible says he's grow, grow up as a tender shoot, as a, as a root out of dry, uh, dry ground. He came up from nowhere, didn't he? I was Christ. The Bible says he, he didn't come from the, from, from the normal tribe of priests. But he did all that in humility. I see pictures of Jesus and he looks like Brad Pitt. I said, Bible says there was no form of comeliness. He didn't physically look good. There was nothing outstanding about him. You say, whoa, he looks good. It's a good look of Jesus right there. No, that's not what the Bible says. Not only was he physically not attractive per se, I didn't say he was an ugly guy, but there was nothing about that would make you desire him. In his presentation, he was born in a manger, amen, came into Israel riding on the coat of an ass. Everything he does was in humility to show us that anybody can come to him, no matter who you are. One of my favorite songs is a Christian rock song called Jesus Rides the Subway with the junkies and the creeps. And let me tell you what, he does. Because I was on the subway. And that's when he touched me and said, hey. I'm going to change your life up. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord. Of course he does. I read a scripture once somewhere. It said the, Lord, the man said the Lord doesn't hear sinners. But the problem was the man wasn't speaking on God's behalf. He wasn't no priest. He was just going by what he had heard. But God does hear sinners. He hears every sinner. He is always trying to make contact with them. Obviously, he's married to the backslider. That he paid the cost for our sin. And all we got to do is receive him. You know, just receive him. I had a son. And he was, I had paid for everything to go through the line. And he came up and got his money out and tried to repay. I said, how many times did I tell you that? You're going back trying to pay for stuff that's already paid for. And that's what we do as Christians sometimes. Keep whatever good things you think you got. Because none of it would work for God. 
He needed Christ to come. Amen. He's, a yes. savior. He's a savior. That's why he came. Because we couldn't save ourselves. Amen. We didn't have a down payment. We didn't have 50% paid. He didn't have nothing. The Bible said all your righteousness is as filthy rags. What he's trying to say is it was the Old Testament reference to women, I'm sorry, or who in the menstrual period. Who In that day, they couldn't come into fellowship where they were menstruating because they didn't have all the technology and pads and all the stuff that make it acceptable and just decent in general. They couldn't do it, so they would stay home. Well, he's trying to say that nothing we've ever done could get you in fellowship with God. He said, well, I came to church. Toss it out. I prayed all day. I hope you did. I'm glad. I was just praying without ceasing. Toss it out. It took the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to bring you into fellowship. And we have this fellowship, and sometimes we don't use it. We have this word, and we disregard it. We can't do that. If you want transformation in your life, if you want to cleanse something out of your life, some of y'all got family members you got to get rid of. I, let me introduce you to OxyClean. The spiritual ball head guy. Spiritual ball head guy. I'll show you how to get folks out of your life. The Bible said the wicked flee when no man pursueth. Y'all need to read the Bible. I got that from an old western nigga. <laughs> but it's in the Bible. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. If you want to get somebody crazy out your house, just start, just start going around reading the scripture. <laughs> I'm not joking. Because some folks won't leave your house. I had a cousin who wouldn't leave. There was some old Mahalia Jackson or something. So I'm thinking I'm going to get out for a while. I said, okay, I'll see you later. Go on, get out of here. I'm just trying to get you out. You'll be playing Hezekiah Walker when you get back. What are you doing to invite the word into your life? You know? I like music, and sometimes I, I just scroll, and I'll get on to the wrong one. The next thing you know, drop it like it's hot, and shoot, 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 and bang, bang, bang. And every once in a while, I bang, bang, bang my head. Oh, Jesus. I got a four, I got a nine millimeter. I might be thinking that's for me to go out and solve problems with. It's not what that thing is for. It's safely somewhere, in case I got to protect my wife. But if I don't do things that are inviting to the word, how's the word going to hang out? The word has a place. He, he wants to hang out in the right place. You know, Jesus came in and cleansed the temple because they were selling money in the church. Trading in the name. Church ain't all that. Church ain't a place to get money. No, a place, church is a place to give money. Some of y'all ain't figured that out yet. And God ain't blessed you yet. He's not going to bless you. Not until you decide, look, I trust you. But these are my money. What my money? Ecclesiastes 11 says, cast your bread on the water. You shall find it after many days. So some of us don't have faith to say, Lord, I trust you. I don't have to know everything about everything. Or the pastor don't have to send me the, the account details. I just trust you. You know, I've been to churches where they want to see every financial receipt. You know, Joy Stewart runs, is our treasurer, and she's not going to give you no information. You don't need all that. Do you, do you got an accounting degree? We could use you if you do. <laughs> well, well, I'm just I'm keeping it real. You know, I'm just keeping it 100. But we got to come in here with the right attitude. And, and where do we find all these things? Some of us are battling with issues about what we need to do with God. Hey, hey, right here. Google it up. Google up a scripture on what you're struggling with. And then go in here. Google is a wonderful source. I use it all the time. Sometimes I get whole sermons off there and then I just edit it. I do. <laughs> What do you think we study? The apostolic doctrine? This ain't your doctrine. This doctrine was passed down from Jesus to the apostles, down to the new church, to the bishops, to the pastors, to us. This is a matricular word. This ain't something. We didn't come up with it new. This is the old-time religion. Yeah. Jude called it a faith once delivered. I'm delivering it, but it was only delivered once. Amen. We're not changing nothing. We're not editing nothing. So how do we know? Well, I'll tell you how we know. Open up his word. Hide it in your heart. And don't sin against it. You think that's hard? It's not hard. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. That's what's hard. 
trying to go against this thing. He told Paul, it's easy to do what? Kick against the pricks. It's hard to go against God. First off, as a believe, Christian, believer, you got to deal with condemnation. And that's a hard thing to do. You can be saved and have salvation and have condemnation in your soul. Amen. Did you know that? Yeah. The Bible says there's no condemnation to them who walk not after the flesh. That's how you get rid of the condemnation. If you want to get rid of the condemnation, walk after the spirit. Amen. What a horrible thing to be saved and have condemnation in your soul. Because you won't follow the spirit. The spirit gives life. The flesh profited nothing. So how long do we have to find out that this recipe ain't no good? Yeah, it, 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 it ain't no good. So we find out if, if we just trust God's word and keep it, despite what people say, despite what people do, despite how people make us feel, because a lot of times we think that it's the preacher that's against us or my sister against us, or my mama who's against us. That's not. When, when, when Jesus met Paul on the road to Damascus, he said, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why are you out there killing Christians? He said, why are you persecuting me? Because this is not an attack on people. This is God's word. And if you, you'd be like, Paul, Paul could have asked, you know, what are you talking about? I have never done nothing to you. Yes, you have, because you oppose God's word. So we want to try to keep that thing as close as we can. So don't run from the word of God. The word of God is good to you. It's the reason why you're here. It's what changed your life. It's what blessed you. It's what gives you faith. It's what increases your faith. That word. And as your knowledge of this word increases, your faith increases. That's how it works. You get you another word. First, you learned about David and Goliath when you were six. And then you got older and you learned some more things, didn't you? And as you get a little older, your faith increases through how? Well, some of us haven't had an increase in years because we still know the same stories that you knew when you was 18. You need to add some more stories to your life. The Bible says these things are written for your instruction that you might be encouraged and have hope. So if you need more encouragement, if you need more hope, you need more word. If you need cleansing in your life, you need more word. You know, so... I expressly go into the word in my own personal life when I'm struggling with something, and I'll open that word up, and I'll read stuff, and I'll, and God, the Bible says that he, he, he gives us wisdom without scolding us. James says he doesn't, and he does not upbraid it. He doesn't, you don't open your Bible, he said, what an idiot, I told you last week. That's not what the Lord does. He, he, he gently opens his word. Just look how gently folds open. They don't even open and turn fast. They fall. And that's how God works with you, gently, with mercy, with grace. Never rough. Never rough. He's always kind, always loving. But if we don't get into that word and find out what we need and where we need it, we could be stuck in a rut for a long time. But, but, but a wise Christian, he, he, he understands that time is a gift. He doesn't disregard or lay aside the importance of the passage of time. The Bible says we are to redeem the time. Time is important. We don't get it back. It's the only commodity you can't get back. You can go get more gold, more cards, more houses. You'll never get today back. So you ought to value right now. Don't wait. As soon as you get home, get in this word, find out where I need God to work on me for him. When he said study this thing, he said to show yourself approved to him. He ain't trying to press no pastor. The pastor will know when you impress God. Trust me, God will tell him. It's time to move this person up. They've got the word hid in their heart. Anyway, I'm done. It's time to give. Let's give God a hand, praise. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to the ladies. Bless you. Bishop, would you come and help this morning? Pastor Boyd, would you come and help this morning? Hide that word in your heart. Don't let nobody take it. Don't let them take it. They're going to try to shake it out of you. Don't, don't let them have it. Give them whatever else you got, but don't give them that word. That word, Bible says, will never go away.
Brother D, just sit on down. I got to talk to you. In the Old Testament, the blessing was poured out at the end. We don't ever want you to leave because that's when the blessing comes. Somebody cut the grass this week. Who was it? Was it you, D? Love you. Appreciate you. I want you to know that. Give Brother D a hand, bro. We're going to bless, bless him real good. Um, we don't have to tell D to do stuff. And, and I thank God for that. If something he's done, he just gets his hand to us. So we want more people like that. The pastor can't get the grass in his knee. Amen. But we come and just enjoy the fact that my wife said it looks nice. I said, yeah, duh. But, uh, you know, we appreciate you. And we love you. And we got something for you. That's why I said don't leave. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Let's stand. Happy Mother's Day. We got something for the mothers, too, don't we? How many mothers are there? Raise your hand if you're a mother. Come on up here. My wife has something for you. Come on, come on up. Let's dismiss first. Okay, and then we'll have the ladies come up. Yes, Pastor. Uh, for the women's conference, I guess I'm going to have to announce this. That's right. We're not there, brothers, on Saturday. But Sunday, yeah. all brothers are welcome here. Yeah. All right. Sunday, everybody here. Right. Yes. All right, all brothers. Yeah. Um, we're there to help, so we can't, we can't go in the... Uh, Mothers, come on up. We'll dismiss after they get their stuff. You can go down there, sweetie. We, we want to say we love the mothers. We thank God for each and every one of you. We appreciate your being a part of this church. And it's just a small gesture. Mother Patton, come on up here. You always bless us and give us so much. We can't repay you, but we are thankful. Thank you so much. None of us would be here without a mother. Nobody like the pen there. Huh? All right. That's right. Praise God. Thank you. Let's give the mothers a hand. Praise you guys. Come on. You can be better than that. Is anybody you love more than your mother? Come on now. Thank God for you. This may be the last Sunday here. So uh, give somebody some love. And we'll, we'll probably try to get back here next week. Ain't we? Are we back here next week? Well, we don't have many left. Yes, Mr. boxes of hand sanitizer, small ones, I guess they're for smaller use there in the back. They came from Bishop Haley, uh, more excellent way foundation. So Bishop Abram bought them back. So grab one so you can use it. You know, after shaking all them hands, you probably need it. Let's dismiss in the name of Jesus. Everyone with uplifted hands. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable on thy side. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Okay, tell someone you love them today, please. They were asking the women's conference on Sunday here, though. Yes. Yes. Ha, ha, ha.
God bless you.
Get in there, girl. Did Joy leave already? Uh, okay, I'm in there now. You're in there? Okay, I'm going to send you the link. And it's pretty simple. You just click on there and put your last name, first name, if you have an email address.
I didn't even wait. Please. I got to see it.